everybody. This is Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company and Inknevo.com. Today I want to talk to you about Noodler's Beaver. Now this is part of their standard line. Noodler's gets a lot of attention for their bulletproof inks and waterproof and everything else proof line. Um, but this is part of just their standard original line. Um, it's a really nice ink. These, the standard line tends to get overlooked a lot. So I'm going to try and bring a little bit to your attention and check out Noodler's Beaver. All right, so here we have Noodler's Beaver. Now, Noodler's bottles themselves, as you can see, are very tall. Um, they have a nice size opening, just under an inch, so you can fit practically any, I don't know of any pen that will not fit in this bottle. Very big opening. Um, the bottle itself it comes with three ounces of ink, which is about 89 millimeters, or, sorry, milliliters. Um, the bottle itself comes full, and I mean full to the brim when you get it. So be careful of that. Make sure that when you open it, that you have it on a flat level surface and that you open it very carefully because it would be very easy to spill. And then, uh, you know, you'll have some fun trying to fill your pen for the very first time out of this bottle. But anyway, there's your Noodler's Beaver. So um, it's a nice brown color. For all the reviews that I did for this video, I use my Pelican M800 Italic with an, a milli, uh, one and a half milli, mini, sorry, millimeter uh, it's italic nib. Um, the first thing I tested it on was the Quovatis Habana, one of my favorite journals. It's a 90 gram Clairefontaine paper, very ink resistant paper. So um, you're not going to have a problem with feathering or bleed through of just about any kind with any ink, um, but uh, Beaver performed very well on this paper. I really like the way that this looks on white paper. The, um, the shading is actually really good for a brown. A lot of times browns tend to run together and not give you very good shading. Um, but this color looks really good. The color of it just leans a little bit towards the red side. It's not a true brown, it leans a little red. And actually that's kind of unique for most brown inks. Most browns tend to either lean towards um, greens or lean towards grays or yellows most often, but uh, not often towards reds. Um, no problem with skipping or starting, even though this is a really slick paper. This uh, standard line of neuters tends to get overlooked a lot, but this is a really solid performing ink. And uh, most people tend to think of noodlers as being incredibly saturated, but this one is not. This is more like um, pretty much any other ink that you would think of. Um, on the back of it, no uh, bleed through of any kind. Next thing I tried it on was a Rhodia web notebook. Now this is a similar journal with 90 gram Clairefontaine paper that's off-white. So the, um, the color changes when you go from white to off-white paper. Um, the main, th th what's interesting is usually the off-white paper makes the inks look darker. But I actually found that in this case, it makes the ink look lighter. Let me go ahead and pull up that Havana again. And I'll show you next to each other. Um, I don't know how well it's going to show up on the video, but uh, to me, it looks like it's darker on the white paper and a little bit lighter on the off-white, but that might be a judgment call. But anyway, nice solid performance on this paper. Um, looks really good. Has more of a yellowish kind of vintage look to it. Um, Whenever you think of vintage browns, you tend to think of them leaning towards the yellow, maybe the green, but towards the yellow end. And um, this off-white paper definitely makes this ink kind of adapt more to a vintage style ink. Um, so if, you th if you're looking for a vintage ink, it might not be the first thing you'd think of, but uh, I think it is worth taking a look, um, especially because it's got really nice shading and the performance is pretty well. It's a pretty wet writing ink in general. Um, oh, sorry, and then I'll show you on the back. Nice solid performance, no bleed through, um, you know, just good, good solid uh, stuff there. You do tend to get a little more what's called show through or ghosting, echoing, whatever you want to call it, um, which is when you can see the writing on the back of the paper. But I'll show you that here on the Moleskina. Now, um, this Moleskina ruled notebook, this is more absorbent paper. It's only 72 grams, so it's thinner paper. Um, and it tends to feather and bleed like crazy. But um, this actually was somewhat controllable. There is some feathering here, which I'll show you. You know, it's got these, uh, these little strands here that like to shoot out in random places. And it, the ink does write really wet on this paper. It just, it feels like it's sucking ink out of the pen. Um, now, it's not necessarily such a bad thing, though, because once it sucks the ink out of the pen, it stays fairly controlled, except for those random strands there. So it's actually not as bad as a lot of other inks I've used on this paper. Um, 
it actually, you know, it's not too bad. So I think this one might be a contender. I think in a finer nib, this one would look a lot better on this paper. But uh, I don't do fine nibs. I like fat, wet nibs. That's my thing. But anyway, um, so it might be a contender for you. The bleed through was there, but it's not as bad as some other inks. For me, it's not an acceptable amount, but it may be for you, or it may be more controlled in a, in a wetter pen, or a, a finer pen. But uh, you can see here what I'm talking about, this, sh sh this shadowing or show through, echoing, whatever. It's when you can see what's written on the other side through this page. Not necessarily bleed through, like the ink's actually coming through to the other page, but when it's, uh, you can just see what's going on. Um, not a real desirable trait, because then generally you won't be able to use both sides of the page. But anyway, um, the last thing I wanted to show you, um, on paper here was this uh, Rhodia dot pad. Now this is 80 gram paper, very ink resistant, made by Claire Fontaine. And uh, you know, you definitely see more of the reddish tones um, to it. It's, it's a little darker, again, just like the Habana. It's a little bit darker than it was on the um, off-white paper, but really good performance. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, got a really good flow, very controlled um, on this paper. Now, I did a drip test. And uh, yeah, this is not an ink resistant paper at all. It's uh, just leaving it on here for maybe 10, 10, 15, 20 seconds, something like that. It almost sucked all the ink off. And there's the faucet test. I mean, it sucks just the life out of this ink. So um, not a real winner in the water resistant category. But then again, it doesn't claim to be. I know water resistance is not a huge factor for everybody, but um, it is for some. And the last thing I wanted to do was show you the um, swabs of other ink colors to compare to it. Now I searched through all of my inks and uh, I was only able to find two that were even somewhat close. Um, here's Noodler's Beaver. Rustic Brown, Diamine Rustic Brown is the closest thing to it, but it has a lot more red to it than Beaver does. Um, Beaver has a little hint of red. Rustic Brown has a whole lot of red, red to it. So it's the I call it comparable. It's really not the same thing, but it's the closest thing that I could find to Beaver. And then Jerobon Terre de Faux, I think in terms of the coloration, is closer to Beaver, but not in terms of saturation. Terre de Faux is much more watered down. I think if you took Beaver and cut it down like maybe 50-50 with water, then it would look a lot more like Terre de Faux. Um, but anyway, that's the closest thing that I could find to it. But so Beaver is a fairly unique ink. Um, so if you really like the color of it, then I would suggest giving it a try. So that's it for my review of Noodler's Beaver. It's a really nice color. I suggest you give it a try if you're looking for a nice dark reddish brown. So anyway, thanks a lot. Email me at brianagoulepens.com if you have any questions. Thanks a lot and write on.